Morning. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, thanks very much for joining us in the community track. Uh, as usual, on community track, we always have a talk about the community, uh, community and the Apache way. And today, um, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Kevin McGrail, who's going to talk to you about the Apache way. Um, if you have any questions about the presentation, please write them into the chat. And at the end of the presentation, we can go through those questions with Kevin. So thanks very much for joining us. And as I say, write your questions in the chat and we'll go through them at the end. OK, so I'll hand over to you, Kevin. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Sharon. So for those who don't know me, my name is Kevin A. McGrail. I've served in a number of roles at the Apache Software Foundation, and it's really a privilege for me to talk about the Apache way. It's a little bit of the amorphous kind of uh, high level approach to how we run the organization and how it works as a bottom up organization and how it's really been able to kind of change computing over the last 21 years since we incorporated. So uh, I'm sad that I'm not there in person, but I'm glad that there's so many people from around the world that can see it and some names that I recognize, you know, Prashant, Curtis, hello. Uh, hope to see you guys more. Uh, and you can't see my great shirt, which was the Montreal Apache uh, hockey shirt, but uh, that aside, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, a little of this is a remedial, but I think there's a lot of people who don't know the ASF. You know, we don't go to a lot of trouble to talk about our organization and we're very intrinsic. So for those who don't know, we're a 501c3 charity. That's a specific type of tax code in the United States, but it means we're a charity. We're not a trade organization. Um, that differentiates us, it differentiates us from a lot of the organizations out there. And most people know us really for the HTTP server and the Apache software license, also known as the ASL v2. Our mission is very simple. We provide software for the public good. And we do so by providing services and supporting the projects that uh, come to us and the communities of individuals that make up those groups. So individuals there is very specific. <clears throat> it's not communities of companies. And, and we do this all at no charge. So uh, free open source software, though you get into a lot of uh, discussions about the word free and what it means. But uh, what we do is at no charge. Uh, the Apache license is a big part of what we're known for. So we're uh, currently on ASL v2. There's no ASL v3 that I'm aware of in process. Uh, it's been a long standing license that has served very well. And what it's known for with a lot of corporations, especially in people, is it's very permissive um, and it's business friendly. So it, allow, it handles things like uh, patent grants and it doesn't have a copyleft provision. The copyleft is a play on words with copyright where uh, several licenses, what you have to do is uh, you have to distribute your source code if you uh, distribute your code for anything. Uh, the Apache software license does not require that. Uh, as I often say, you know, build a company, uh, use our software, make a billion dollars, you owe us nothing. It'd be nice if you came and sponsored us and, and let us keep doing what we were doing, uh, but you owe us nothing. There's no, no quid pro quo whatsoever. But you know, for those who have never heard of the Apache Software Foundation or have only heard of us about with the Apache HTTPD project, you know, there's over 380 projects underneath our umbrella. Uh, and three points that I often brought up when I was the VP of fundraising that resonated very well is that 80% of the world's websites use some of our software. Every smartphone on the planet uses our software and every plane in US airspace is tracked with our software. So we're very intrinsic, as I mentioned, to how the world works but we're not really out there trying to make our, a name for ourselves and toot our own horns. We're happy to play it in the background and just be intrinsic to the way computing happens. And very proud of that. We have tons of projects, as I mentioned, almost 400 uh, from A to Z. You know, we have Spark, Tomcat, Spam Assassin, which is where I'm involved. Tons in our incubator, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Uh, Spark, uh, I mentioned already, uh, Hadoop, uh, et cetera. All of these are Apache projects and more correctly called Apache uh, Hadoop or Apache HTTP or Apache Spam Assassin. Uh, but, you know, the, I did cheat with Xerxes, uh, you know, when I said A to Z, but, uh, you know, for the most part, we're bad as engineers. We don't know how to name things uh, very well. And some of that comes up when you see some of the projects like Zookeeper. So we really do have A to Z. Uh, Zookeeper is a, a way of managing and uh, handling your group services. It's oftentimes used a lot with uh, Hadoop, uh, Big Top as well. And a lot of times those names are, as I mentioned, named by engineers. So Doug, when he named uh, 
Hadoop named it after his uh, child's uh, stuffed elephant. And elephants belong at a uh, big top at the zoo, hence big top uh, came along, hence zookeeper to, I guess, pick up the, the, the dung from the elephants. I don't know, that's why he's got a shovel and whatnot. But in any case, we're not really good at naming things, but we're good at writing code. So uh, A to Z. Uh, we've been incorporated now since March 26th of 1999. So we just celebrated our 21st birthday. birthday. Um, as I joke, now we can have a beer. Uh, that's our original logo. I think there's actually a surfboard that usually comes around for the uh, various uh, events that you don't get to see with that logo on it. But the Apache HTTP or the HTTPD project is uh, really our grandfather project. It's what started everything and, uh, you know, what we are. Um, so, you know, some of the things I like to mention to people, you know, we're not a democracy. What we are, um, you know, tongue in cheek is we're a bunch of elitists who believe people have no innate right to vote. Uh, you have to earn merit. You have to be on a project. You have to earn the right to vote. Uh, but after you do, um, everybody has an equal vote. So there, it's not a market monarchy. Uh, we have kings and pawns, as I say, side by side. Literally, uh, people who are students and and uh, have no income whatsoever, alongside people that might have uh, seven and eight figures in the bank, uh, work together and solve problems. Uh, additionally, as I mentioned, we are not a trade organization and we're not really capitalists. You know, you can't buy a seat on our board. Uh, we let the industry drive us rather than us drive the industry. So, for example, I've had people come up and say, oh, how many projects will you guys have in IOTDB next year? Or how many will you have on XYZ new technology? And, you know, the answer is I don't know. It depends on how many communities come to us, how many people uh, submit projects to the incubator, how many of those projects are accepted. Um, and as I said, that's that's why we let the industry drive us. We're a, a bottom-up led organization, all volunteer led. And that lets us uh, weather a lot of things because we're not trying to predict what the next cycle is. We're simply there to help people who are working on that next cycle. Uh, as I mentioned, we're a meritocracy. So to be able to have a say, you have to prove your worth and that worth is judged by the community. Um, that meritocracy is a real big part of the Apache way. But you know, before we get into the Apache Wave more formally, you know, the, the real question we get asked is, you know, why does the foundation exist? And the, the real reason that the foundation exists is to support the projects. So that's what I mean when I say we're a bottom up organization. So the leadership is there to make sure that the projects can run. We want to make sure they have the resources. We want to make sure they have legal protection because there's always lawyers out there. Um, so the ASL V2 might have to be defended. We might have to de de defend IP providence. Uh, but we also want to give uh, the people the ability to build a community and build recognition. We'll talk a lot about the uh, community and why that's a big, big, big deal. It's number four on this list, but it probably should be number one. Um, so with that said, I'll get into the very amorphous Apache Way. So uh, many times when people are giving Apache Way presentations, they will refer to them as yet another Apache Way presentation. And the reason for that is there is no uh, codified Apache way. This is the uh, generally accepted view that I have of how the Apache way works. Uh, I think it's very accurate and I wouldn't uh, put it out there otherwise, but you know, there's plenty of other people and others involved with the Apache that uh, might differ and have a different view on how things can get done. And that's part of the great way uh, that we work is that uh, we aren't set in stone. We are evolving. We're constantly uh, working on what the next great thing is. Um, and that's been a lot of the appeal that people have had. So, you know, we have some rigidity when it's needed, but we have the flexibility when it's required. Um, and that gives us uh, that resiliency. So that's the first thing really with the Apache way that it, we're resilient. And people sometimes hate it when I'm bringing this up, but oftentimes people hate the Apache way for a few years. They find it to be, uh, you know, a handcuff, uh, you know, they, to, to shackle them and, and saddle them down. And then usually what happens is a couple of years in, something happens, it's different for different people, uh, but some catharsis occurs and they're like, oh, that's why they do these things this way. And unfortunately, a lot of times it's been difficult to tell people that, but I will say that stick with the Apache way for a few years, you will find it to be amazing. You will find it to be a great uh, group of misfits out there in the world, really trying to make the world a better place and uh, a great community to belong, uh, belong to. Uh, but as I said, no one way is the Apache way and yet another uh, the Apache way presentation uh, would be a good way to refer to any Apache way presentation. So with the resilience, though, we are what we call self-correcting. Um, the big thing is, is that, uh, you know, uh, Danny Angus put it very well. We kind of make things up as we go along. 
part of that is because we're in uncharted area. You know, when we started working with what is known as open source and ASLV and uh, the B1 and B2 license and whatnot, uh, it wasn't like everybody else had been doing this. We had to figure out how to do it. When we wanted to figure out how to make communities work and have our governance apply to those other uh, projects and make this scale and grow so that we could have uh, what is now closing in on 800 members uh, and 8,000 committers and nearly 400 projects, uh, we had to figure it out as we went along. There wasn't a good model to do this. And oftentimes I tell the story that, you know, in 1998, uh, I was working with a publicly traded company that wanted to spend millions of dollars on Sun uh, Solaris at the time and uh, Oracle database. And I convinced them to go with uh, what is now CentOS and uh, a product called uh, MySQL. Different uh, MySQL is not an Apache project, but uh, to go with an open source solution. And that was a knockdown drag out fight for multiple months. Uh, that wouldn't even occur today. Uh, people understand that open source can mean high quality software uh, and it can really solve a lot of really amazing problems. Uh, but the, the next thing after resiliency is really the charity. You know, we're a dedicated organization. We're made up of members that are really interested in making the world a better place. And we do that by producing software at no charge for the public good. And as I mentioned earlier, the public includes people, it includes companies, it includes nation states, whatever. We produce that code so that the world can be a better place with free software, with code that's out there that you can download, that you can make changes to, that you can contribute back if you want or not contribute back if you want. We give it away freely and uh, with no quid pro quo, no, no uh, requirement that you give back to us. Additionally, uh, you know, community is really important to us. Uh, you know, there's a statement we have, which is uh, communities over code. What that really means is it comes down to kind of a technology standpoint. If you are, uh, you know, familiar with technology and you're thinking about backups and you have code and something happens and you lose all that code, at Apache, that would be bad, but we wouldn't consider it really bad because we still have the community that wrote that code and they can probably uh, band together and, and and cobble together the code and write it better than it was done the first time to begin with. So the community to us is significantly more important than the code. Like I said, backups get lost, we lose the code, no big deal. We lose the community, that's devastating. And uh, you know, companies, uh, uh, not companies, projects, go through life cycles. Uh, you know, I'll talk about this a little bit more, but those life cycles include the fact that you know, one day that software might be the hottest thing used by everybody on the planet, and a couple of years later it might be used by nobody and it goes into the attic. But what we want to see is we want to see that community uh, grow and go on to another project and continue with the projects and doing charity and continue making projects that change the world. Uh, but additionally, one of the things we do with the community is we do support minority vo voices. We try to build support rather than rule. Uh, what that kind of uh, the best way I can describe that is uh, that uh, people who have votes um, can actually veto things uh, with a single vote. The goal behind it is, is that if there's a veto done, there's a problem and you need to go back and figure out why they're vetoing it, what you can do to make this uh, non-problematic, uh, how you can make it so that there isn't an issue. Uh, because the whole goal here, like I said, is not just to meet a timeline or produce a product, it's to build a, co a community. And you build communities by building consensus. Uh, what's oftentimes one of my failings is telegraphing uh, intentions, uh, especially over email. So. A lot of the way we build that consensus at the Apache is with our voting process. Uh, it's a very neat process. And in fact, uh, if you ever see uh, somebody who's a Apache Software Foundation member or committer, you will often see them uh, comment on things with just plus one. So plus one just means, hey, I like that. That's awesome. I, I give my support behind that. A zero is a neutral and a negative one is a veto. Uh, so oftentimes we do things by lazy consensus if it's a non-controversial. So if you were doing something, you'd say, hey, if anybody has a problem, let me know within 72 hours and all. Otherwise, I'm going to do this. Uh, but otherwise, you should give a 72 hour because we are a volunteer led organization and all of our committers are volunteers. Uh, they might be paid by the organizations they work for. Uh, but other than that, as far as the Apache Software Foundation is concerned, they're individuals who are members. We need to, to, to be cognizant of that. So weekends and holidays and people just, uh, you know, not working on it constantly is uh, a part of our culture, part of our community. And uh, what's very important, important to us is that uh, consensus is not always equal to un unanimity. Uh, what that basically means is that sometimes you just have to come to a consensus that you're not gonna be unanimous. Uh, at the Apache Spam Assassin Project, for example, 
uh, one of the things that we did is we developed a plug-in uh, concept. And so certain things that we may not have 100% unanimity on are pushed to being a plug-in. And that way it has to be uh, enabled by uh, somebody uh, manually uh, to turn on that plug-in, et cetera. It doesn't change the core project. Uh, those are ways that you can build consensus and not necessarily uh, upset people with a lack of unanimity, uh, but yet still have uh, the community be solid and support the projects. So additionally, meritocracy, we've talked about this a number of times. And so power, if you will, is earned through merit. You know, you don't really get a vote until you've shown that you know how to do things and you've contributed to the project, whether that be documentation or code or just bug grooming, uh, graphics. You know, I try and make sure that I recognize people of all different types of contributions to the project, uh, not just those who code, uh, but those who, for example, answer user questions, et cetera. Um, and earn that merit, earn that right to have a vote on it. And we use a thing called a project management committee for those who have recognized merit on a project. And, uh, you know, for me, one of the things I often say is the most merit is earned by people who have ideas and put those ideas into action. You know, lots of people have ideas, but very few people have the follow through to make sure those ideas happen. So we have another thing, which is not very polite, but it's just F and do it, JFDI. You know, if you have an idea, you think it's worth it, put it forward. We have uh, different things, RTC, CTR, that stands for review, then commit, or commit, then review. You can be in different modes, but you know, a lot of times uh, you know, we're here to experiment. We don't necessarily have a roadmap for what's gonna be the next cool thing. And so sometimes you have to put yourself out there and just do it and see how it works and build a, a, a concept. And that is part of where you earn merit and, and do it so that people will give you that, that little bit of rope when you wanna go out there and do something that's a little unusual. Additionally, as I mentioned, um, everybody at Apache is an individual. They don't represent their companies. Um, in fact, I don't even really pay attention to what companies people work for on the PMC. To me, that has no bearing on their vote and uh, shouldn't. Uh, that's not how we run. But, you know, the biggest problem with any meritocracy, uh, which I do think works very well at the Apache Software Foundation, is that there's a risk of turning it into a dictatorship. Uh, we try to make sure that doesn't happen. We have friendly phrases for it, like a, a, a a beneficial dictator for life, BDFL. Um, you know, look at those kind of issues. Look if somebody is getting too much merit um, and look at maybe rotating your chair. Uh, chair doesn't really have much power. They just report to the board, um, but it can help to spread that around. Make sure the project is community, the project's community is healthy and, uh, you know, people aren't just uh, railroading things through. That's not the way you're gonna build a healthy, long-standing community. Additionally, as a group of engineers, um, some people will say we're overly transparent. I don't really know that that's a possible thing, uh, but we do have some rules around transparency. So the first thing is that if it didn't happen on list, it didn't happen. What we like to do is we like to have discussions, we like to have decisions, and we like to have those archived. The reason that is is that anybody can join at any time. They can go back, they can look at the archives, they can see the reasoning behind things. Um, if you have uh, meetings, there should be contemporaneous notes brought back to the list about those meetings because sometimes a meeting or a phone call or something happens at like Apache Con, you have a meeting with the group. Uh, but the point is you wanna build that community, you wanna build it in a way that is pro-volunteer, that it's pro uh, the entire uh, globe and uh, that the information is there and supports what we call reversible baby steps. So with that, we'd rather see small baby steps rather than uh, some big, huge step that may or may not break things. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a judgment call when that happens, but uh, reversible baby steps is a lot about how we do it and we do it with that transparency. So if something doesn't work out, we can backtrack from it and, uh, you know, revisit. Because as I said, a lot of times we're doing things that nobody has ever done before. All right, before I go on too much farther, uh, I just wanted to share a quick story. So uh, Blue's Clues uh, actually has a very special uh, place in my heart uh, for two reasons. First of all, um, I really feel bad and have to apologize 22 years later uh, to Steve from Blue's Clues. Uh, Steve is a, uh, a Canadian who really epitomizes the, uh, you know, that just um, very polite uh, Canadian society where they apologize for things they shouldn't apologize for. My favorite stories about Blue's Clues revolve around two things. So first of all, when my wife and I had just been married, um, I took her to E3 and introduced her to geekdom. And E3 was the entertainment expo. Uh, and it was just huge. It was chaos. I think the year I brought her, there was 70 or 80,000 people there and they had a Nickelodeon booth. And um, my wife was very excited because she knew Nickelodeon. She knew Blue's Clues because she knew that her nephew 
love Blue's Clues. So she walked over to the Blue's Clues booth where they were doing pictures and she got kind of frustrated after like five minutes that this one, uh, you know, geek, as she would refer to it, wouldn't get out of the chair so she could take a picture with Blue. So eventually she asked him if he would get out of the chair. He apologized, got out of the chair. I have a uh, photographic proof. So this is a picture of her in the red chair with Blue. That's a picture of me uh, 22 years ago or so uh, with uh, Blue as well. And um, this is from 1998. So this is May of, of May, May of 1998, I think May 21st, remember correctly. Um, we later found out when our kids were born and started watching new, uh, Blue's Clues that uh, she had kicked the star of the, the show, uh, Steve, out of his chair um, and taken a picture with the stupid puppet. So we've always felt bad. So Steve, if you ever see this, we apologize uh, that we kicked you out of your chair. Uh, additionally, because uh, the second story around Blue's Clues that I love is that uh, my son uh, was born highly affected by autism. He didn't speak for many years. Uh, the second time he ever spoke was when we were uh, near, uh, we were walking through a shopping center and the veterinarian's office was there and he ran up to the window and started pointing to a big giant blue paw print that was in the window and started saying a coup, a coup, which was his best attempt to say a clue, a clue. So if anybody out there has kids or has watched Blue's Clues, you now know. So Blue's Clues, that's my story. All right, let me get back to the Apache way. All right, so the next thing we like to make sure at the Apache Way is that we're pragmatic. Uh, what we mean by that is we like to have uh, visible and reusable code. We'd like to see projects pulling code from other places, not reinventing the wheel, et cetera. Uh, that visibility among projects, the ability to reuse codes is just good programming practice, but it's also just great for making projects that come into the incubator. One of the questions that we ask about with the incubator, which we'll talk about is, uh, you know, uh, what other projects at the Apache Software Foundation do they use? Uh, additionally, you know, we do risk mitigation. So a lot of what we do with, uh, with projects that come into the project is we make sure they're isolated from legal threats. We make sure that the uh, IP provenance is, is handled. We make sure that the licensing is done correctly uh, and things like that. And that protects both people who use the code as well as the programmers. So uh, we're not gonna you know, let problems happen and we're gonna protect you. Additionally, and this is actually from a sponsor, which I loved, um, but it lets you control your own destiny. So everything at the Apache Software Foundation is uh, never end of life. Um, you know, every project that we have is either in the attic or available, so you can download it, compile it, and use it. Doesn't matter if that's, you know, 20, 30, 50 years from now. Uh, I hope that our code is around for that long. And, uh, you know, this has been a big deal for one of the customers, for example, was telling me about how uh, one of the projects they used decided to end of life. They changed everything. They didn't like it. They ended up finding an Apache software project. They it, it were, became a very large sponsor of ours, started contributing to that product. And uh, basically that was a way of them controlling their destiny, making sure that you know a company that was external to them didn't uh, control what they wanted to do. So open source software lets you do that. The Apache way is big about making sure you can do that. We already mentioned this, no copyleft principles and very pro business. If you're ever unsure of what license to start with, uh, you really should just start with the Apache license. If you find out that's not the right solution, as Drias puts here, uh, previously with Spam Experts, uh, he recently left. Um, you can switch later to the GPL v3, but going the other way around from the GNU public license version three to the Apache software license is very, very, very difficult. So, um, you know, by starting with the Apache, you can really start off on the right foot and really see about how that transparency and all this Apache way can make for a successful project and uh, work in a business uh, role as well. Uh, that pragma uh, pragmatic rule, you know, uh, one of the things this came from a uh, company I worked at that uh, was in the startup world. Uh, if you're ever in a merger and acquisition and you're using something with GPL, it can be a problem in the disclosure stage. Um, Apache doesn't have those problems. So you can have uh, a pretty decent de-risking by using Apache software and Apache software uh, license projects. You don't have to be a project inside the, the, the umbrella to use our license. Our license is available for anybody to apply to their software and distribute how they will. Uh, but you know, it, it definitely helps if you're in the commercial world, if you're in the merchants and acquisition, running a startup, et cetera. Another big thing with the Apache way is that we're vendor neutral. As I mentioned, all, everybody who's here is all a um, is representing their individual. Um, you know, if you want to start a company, do it, make billions off it, you owe us nothing. Um, and because of that, you know, as I mentioned, I don't pay attention or care where people work. That's not uh, that's not a bearing on when we vote. It doesn't have, you know, somebody can't say that, oh, I work for XYZ company 
and we really need this feature. No, you got to make a feature that gets voted on that people like, or you got to reach consensus or uh, whatnot, either through unanimity or through non-unanimity. Uh, as I mentioned on the Spam Assassin, you know, we, we promote plugins. So if we have a controversial um, feature, we make sure it's implemented only in a plugin, and uh, that way people can be like, okay, it can be uh, enabled, uh, you know, uh, by, by uh, you have to enable it uh, manually, and that makes it okay for the rest of the group that they can go, okay, I can, I can allow that through or be neutral and not veto it um, if they believe strongly on it. Uh, additionally, inclusion. So uh, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, we have many people, all walks of life, all socioeconomic backgrounds, all around the world, et cetera. And so, you know, uh, the thing I definitely say is that merit is not based on age, sex, religion, sexual preference, ethnicity, um, you know, country of origin, physical, cultural traits. It's one of the wonderful parts about mailing lists and, uh, you know, working online is, you know, people don't have to know anything about you. If you earn merit, by writing good code or being a good netizen in the community, that's all that's needed. So, um, and that inclusion is very important. As I talked about it, you know, that's where we get community over code. That's where we're working to fix our diversity issues. I mean, your computer industry has a problem with too many people like me that are just white, older males, and and uh, you know that doesn't bode well for the diversity. So we like to make sure we're trying to uh, promote diversity. Uh, recently, about a year and a half, maybe two years ago now. Uh, we started our diversity and inclusion group, um, headed up by Grizz, does a fabulous job uh, getting people in there. And that's part of what we call the, the pipeline, just getting people involved in the projects, finding out what our issues are and finding out how to make us more inclusive. And all of that is to try and build stronger communities because uh, the communities really are uh, much, much more important than the code. And I will leave you with one final tip here before I go into my last section. Well, I think I'm doing okay on time. Um, and that's really just kind of applied behavioral analysis. Um, what this basically does is you reinforce the behavior you want to see repeated. So if you're ever training a dog, you know, you only reward the dog for good behavior and you ignore the bad behavior. If you punish a dog for bad behavior, for example, the dog will become confused and won't learn well. So it's pretty well, uh, pretty well documented that positive reinforcement works better for training. Um, towards that uh, end, there's a wonderful guy, Tim Freeman, uh, wrote this concept that I read uh, over 20, uh, well, over almost 25 years ago. It looks like 24 years. Uh, Tim Freeman wrote this thing. It was DNFTEC, do not feed the energy creature. And today that's what we would call trolls or flame wars. And it basically just said, you know, if there's somebody just trolling, just ignore them. Uh, whatever you can do to not feed them, not reward that negative behavior uh, is going to be what brings uh, it to the, the forefront. So I do encourage you go back and read that original uh, post. I thought it was very ahead of its time before trolls and whatnot were really known. But, uh, you know, we used to have this problem back in the bulletin board days. That's when this was written. And I think it applies just as well today on do not feed the energy creature. I just now happen to know more about the science and the psychology behind why it works. So, all right, the last section, and this is a pretty small section, is just really about, uh, you know, the Apache Software Foundation, the Apache way, and innovating open source software. So. One of the, the, the key points that I wanted to bring up again, uh, so 386 is the current open source count. You can always get our count by going to projects.apache.org. I also love showing off apache.org slash logos. So you can just see all the cool logos that fall underneath um, the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, additionally, we have 47 incubating podlings. What that means is those are projects that haven't, that are still learning the Apache way. And they're still going through the process of learning how to be underneath our umbrella. And it can take anywhere from, you know, let's say a year to never uh, to graduate out of the incubator. I am proud that uh, I'm working on uh, mentoring and championing, I think, uh, about five projects. One of them just graduated. So IOTDB just graduated as a top level project. <clears throat> that means they used to be a, a podling, but now they're a project on their own, running their own, uh, controlling their own destiny, et cetera, and voting as their PMC is learned with the Apache way, uh, again, from that bottom up design. The Apache Incubator is where they're taught that process. Um, it's a great place to get involved if you want to learn about new technology and what's coming down the pipe and, and what might be the biggest thing uh, years from now. Um, to get involved with the Apache Incubator, you can go to incubator.apache.org. Um, you know, if you're interested in being a project, uh, you, there's uh, tons of uh, wikis out there that have what you're doing. You, you want to try and bring a proposal about your project. And really what we look for a lot of times is what you're doing towards building a community around that and how we can help you build that community. 
we aren't just a repository of code. As I mentioned, communities are more important to us than code. So we want to see at the incubator how we can build your community, how we can make you stronger, how you can use the Apache way uh, to make a really, really great project. Um, it is our entryway into becoming part of the foundation's effort, especially if you have an established product. Um, typically, it needs to be licensed as Apache or able to be licensed as Apache. We can help answer questions about how you might have to do the, the re-licensing and whatnot. Uh, but basically, all your ext any external projects or any code donations um, enter the ASF through the incubator. That's the formal process for it. Um, additionally, it has uh, two primary goals. Uh, basically, first of all, make sure they meet our legal standards. As we mentioned, licensing, able to, to make sure the risk is mitigated, things like IP providence are handled, uh, things that uh, as well. Uh, number two is that we're able to develop a new community. Um, you know, what we want to see is, is people behind the project. We don't care what the project does. You know, you, you, we're not there to judge whether or not we think it's a good project or a bad project or whether it's uh, going to have a short lifetime or a long time, a lifetime. What we care about is, is there a community behind this project? Can it follow the Apache way and can it benefit from follow uh, from uh, formal mentorship in the Apache way? And if so, the more the merrier, uh, you know, uh, a merry band of misfits and whatnot. So you can visit the uh, foundation and how it works as a great introduction, or as I mentioned before, the incubator.apache.org has lots of great information. And the final slide <coughs> I wanted to, <coughs> excuse me, the final slide I wanted to leave you with <coughs> really brings this all together with, you know, what is the Apache Software Foundation about the Apache way and the Apache incubator and about how um, I've really been able to innovate with open source software and doing so with real companies with the fact that, you know, I have to earn money to pay for my kids to go to college and put food on the table, et cetera. And, you know, at its core with open source software is kind of this concept of radical transparency. So uh, over the years, my company uses a lot of things where we uh, do things like Google Docs because of the high level of collaboration where multiple people can work on the same thing. And we try and make sure that it's shared with as many people as possible. Uh, this type of radical transparency is good because um, by sharing it both with the world, we can get other people who are interested in moving the technology forward. We're able to get other ideas that we might not have seen. And the number of times that people have come up with ways to use software I've developed that I never would have envisioned has been just huge. Um, so by promoting radical transparency, sharing our ideas, sharing our code, um, sharing uh, both internally as high as we can and with the world as high as we can, it has really helped us uh, be uh, monumentally uh, successful. Uh, additionally, uh, one of the things that I could do an entire talk just about this one point is that at my firm, we use a very good conflict of interest policy. Uh, we promote open source and uh, this is, so this is the Peregrine Computer Consultants Corporation and Apache Software Foundation. It's open to link. Um, but you'll, you'll notice what it does is it merges with the, uh, the AT, uh, excuse me, the ASF and merges with the Apache way. It talks about the fact that, you know, for example, you're allowed to vote and um, your vote has no bearing on your employment. You know, you're not going to be um, uh, stressed uh, about voting against something just because it might benefit the company. You're a member of the ASF as a individual, et cetera. And these type of points are well caveated here. I don't know that it's perfect, but we found it to be very good. We found it to be uh, excellent for our customers to understand uh, that we're willing to work on open source projects and we're willing to do things. And this is the conflict of interest policy we, we follow uh, when we're working with that. And how do we maintain, you know, the uh, as a, you know, that conflict and, and do it well with both the corporation and the foundation. Uh, so I do encourage uh, your uh, organizations that you work with to um, have a uh, good conflict of interest disclosure policy and um, uh, and whatnot. So anyway, uh, I will say uh, thank you after that. And I will be in the um, I will be in the Slack channel for any of you have questions. I am on LinkedIn as well and love talking to people. I do again apologize to Steve at Blues Clues and, uh, you know, sponsor Apache. Um, anything I forgot to, to cover there, Sharon? <laughs> Right, you've just come off the five minutes, five minutes sort of warning now. So, no, that's great. Um, so, uh, you mentioned a couple of things. So, if people wanted to know a bit more about Incubator, we do have a, a specific Incubator track, and that's running at the moment. So, just take a look on the schedule for that. 
And you also mentioned diversity as well. And uh, we do have a presentation on the, from the DNI group. Excellent. Well, um, uh, are there any questions? I see, uh, and hi, uh, Andrew and Prashant and Curtis, thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah. I, it's my pleasure. I love talking about the Apache Software Foundation. I love espousing its, its uh, benefits and really getting more people involved in it. And, you know, like I said, you know, I myself included in many engineers and programmers that I've talked to just hate the Apache way for a, a year, two years, three years, <laughs> um, and then they fall in love with it. And people hate it when I say that, but it's true. And, you know, so if you have any questions for Kevin, just please type them into the chat. Excellent. How did I get so good looking? Where, do, where can you get a, uh, a hockey shirt like this? Um, et cetera, I can answer almost any questions. The slides, by the way, I will, will be up and published. And my understanding is it might take uh, days or weeks before the YouTube uh, recordings for these events are up online, but they will be available um, on YouTube. Um, the, the the program that we're doing, uh, Hopin does uh, record everything and it takes some post-processing and whatnot, but i uh, very proud to support that. All right. All right. Well, it you. doesn't look like there's any questions, so I will wish everybody uh, good luck and I'll be in the, um, the Slack channel for hashtag community on, what is it, apachecon.slack.com. And, uh, you know, feel free to come say hi there. Okay, thank you very much, Kevin. Okay, so our next session, uh, to, in order to get into the next session, you'll have to leave this one, and the next session will start in uh, just, uh, just over, or just under five minutes. Okay, right, thank you everybody. Bye everyone.